So we are here at the Biohackers World Conference. I'm Jenny, also known as Biohacker Blondie, and here I am interviewing the amazing <laughs> Dr. Sogol. So you are just so knowledgeable in all things functional and also longevity. We're gonna get all into longevity, so I'm so excited. So thank you for coming on and letting me interview you. So if you wanna just kind of say a little bit about your background and then a little bit of what longevity is and aging. Hi, I'm Dr. Sogol Ash. I'm a functional medicine doctor and the longevity director for Concierge MD. So longevity to me is really like first, I always like to think about longevity is you need to know how you're aging and why you're aging, you know, in order to extend your lifespan and your health span. And I think of longevity as a mix of lifespan and health span. So not just extending the amount of years you live, but the quality of those years is really, for me, what, what I think about when I think about longevity. For sure. It's like people need to be living a good life today and then also extending their life is so important. So both of those factors. Exactly. So what do you think, what are the key factors that you think are causing aging? Great question. I think there's like, <laughs> a lot. A lot. There's a lot, but there's some, definitely some hallmarks. Yeah. So I like to think of like oxidative stress and inflammation. Mm. You know, an easy way to think about it is just stress on the cells, stress on the body. So when you have that, you get, you know, you get these cells that don't look like a healthy cell mm -hmm. and free radicals start attacking your cells. Um, inflammation we know causes aging, mm -hmm. causes, you know, it's at the root of all chronic illness. Yeah. Another thing for me is mitochondrial dysfunction. Mm -hmm. We have mitochondria, right, in all our cells. Mm -hmm. They're like our battery source, our power source. So if your mitochondria are not working properly, you're aging much faster than you should be. And what do you think is hindering our mitochondrial, like, dysfunction? A lot of things. Um, toxins are a big one. I see toxins like pesticides, heavy metals, um, mold. They yeah. really affect our mitochondria, even just stress, mental stress, physical stress, like even exercise affects our mitochondria yeah. and our body rebuilds. But you know, if your body's exhausted, it's not going to rebuild the way it should be. Mm -hmm. It's so important. So what are you, what do you suggest some people, because you know, there's the detoxing, getting toxins out of our mm -hmm. body to, you know, extend our longevity and for overall health. What do you think is a kind of a good beginner guide to detox? Great question. I'm so glad you asked this because <laughs> people call me all the time saying, oh, I started this detox that they found online and they feel terrible. So I don't recommend people just detoxing, you know, doing these things they find online because it can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. Detox can be really heavy on the body. Mm -hmm. um, I always say try to work with a doctor <laughs> if you can because we don't know what's going on in everyone's individual bodies. Mm. An easy way though is, you know, trying a sauna just sweating. That's one of our main forms of detox. Favorite. Right? <laughs> just get in the sauna, you know, try to, you know, and start your timer once you start sweating, not once mm. you get in. Minimum 15, 20 minutes of sweating a couple times a week if you can. Mm -hmm. One of the easiest ways to start detoxing and just taking gentle liver support. So like mm. a little bit of milk thistle, a little bit of NAC. But again, I always recommend talking to a doctor because some people, if they have a really big toxic burden, you really need to personalize a detox for them. Yeah, I know. It's it's not some simple parasite cleanse or one little thing. It's like a combination it's to do it correctly, making exactly. sure all your organs are functioning, detoxing correctly. And yeah. then of course, I love the sauna. So also since you're in functional, I like I'm a big candidate also of blood work. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you are as well as to extend your longevity. So what do you what is your typical? Maybe we'll like talk about some deficiencies really quick. Yeah. Yeah, so blood I agree with you. Like I always say you test don't guess. Mm. Um, you should really know your biomarkers and know what's going on in your body. Some of the biggest deficiencies I see, I think of course we all now know vitamin D is a big deficiency I see in people, but I'm seeing a lot of iron deficiency now. Mm. A lot of people like, either they're not getting enough iron or they, their bodies aren't absorbing it and storing it properly. And that's a big reason why people are tired today. Yeah, do you see that mostly in women? I know that's a big factor. More in women, men. but I'm seeing it in men now too. Wow, yeah. interesting. Very yeah. interesting. And I've, I've, I was actually noticing like, I've had to put a lot more people on iron support. Interesting. Recently. And what do you recommend? Because I've taken, I've had low iron in the past. Mm -hmm. um, do liquid, stuff like pill form. Yeah, liquid is a bit easier on the digestive system. I like to do one called Ferrazorb from Thorn. Mm. Um, it, you know, it's 
has vitamin C in it. Whatever kind of iron you take, take it with vitamin C so that it absorbs easier. It won't make you constipated that way. Yeah, that's such a good one. Little hack. (laughs) Yeah. But another deficiency is testosterone. It's probably like one of the biggest deficiencies Uh, I'm seeing today. It's like half of what it used to be. So it's so like, and most men are not thinking about this. I don't know if you're also talking about women, but I, you know. More men. Mostly men. And it's something I don't know. What are factors because this is probably a big topic that men want to know is that can help them increase their testosterone yeah well first i always recommend finding out why the testosterone is even low yeah right because a healthy (laughs) sleep is a big one yes yeah sleep toxins are another one right endocrine disruptors Mm -hmm. like even your personal care products drinking tap water like i i get men low testosterone, they're drinking plastic water bottles every day. Oh I'm like, God. well, of course your testosterone Or have low. those fragrances plugged mm-hmm. in the outlets. And I'm like, why? Yeah. This is like destroying yeah. your hormones. Exactly. <laughs> so there's all these hormone disruptors in their, in their everyday life that they just don't know about. And then yeah. they're like, why is my testosterone low? I know. And the best thing with like blood work and lab work is that you can retest and see if what you're doing is working. It's exactly. the best. So yeah. I'm just such a candidate. So, and then also there's so much with long longevity and biohacking and I know you're a fan of NR and niagen Mm -hmm. so can you talk a little bit about that how that helps with our mitochondria and cellular health absolutely yeah so NR is a precursor to NAD and NAD is a coenzyme that our mitochondria need to make energy Mm. and as we age you know we hit middle age our NAD depletes by 50 percent and yeah that's a crazy number once you hit 30 it starts to deplete Mm. and then I like to, like we just said, NAD is kind of like our battery source, like our power source. Mm -hmm. So NR helps replete those NAD levels in a really like safe and gentle way. Taking NAD on its own, like in an IV injection can be harder for the body to absorb or to accept. Mm -hmm. You know, often people will get an inflammatory response from doing a big NAD IV. Yeah. NR, which, you know, Niagen's IV, you know, I think they're the only ones doing it. The Niagen IV will really safely help elevate your NAD levels. You do an IV and within a couple hours, it increases 20% your NAD. Yeah, and your body just accepts it much easier. Yeah, so you're also a can of supplementation as mm-hmm. well. So do you take that daily? Are you? Yeah. Okay. I take, sometimes I forget, I admit, but I usually take the oral niagen, um, the pro. I take the thousand milligram because I've tested my mitochondria. <laughs> yeah. I tested my mitochondria recently. Like um, I did a Dutch test and it saw I saw that my mitochondria needed help. Like I've, yeah. been, I've just been like overworking. I know. Yeah, so I, I've been focusing on it. Is this the me screen? Mm, okay. I did a Dutch test. Oh, the Dutch. Okay, yeah. not the mitochondria. When you do an organic uh, organic acid test, part of it, it'll mm-hmm. look at like neurotransmitters, your mitochondrial health. Mm. So it's really amazing. That's another part. You, you can literally test anything now. I know. It's great. I think this is the future of health is like being able to have access to as many tests as you can and really personalizing your own health. It's yeah. so important. So also you talked about recently on the panel, um, <laughs> just about an hour ago, but you talked about senolytics. So mm-hmm. can you talk about that for longevity? Yeah, so senolytics, so as we age, we get these zombie cells. So they're metabolically active and they're dividing. Uh, oh no, they stop dividing, but they're active. Mm. So they're just hanging out in this zombie state and they kind of can spoil the na- whole neighborhood. They can affect the cells around them and damage them. So senolytics like Fisetin and quercetin actually kill off those zombie cells, which are incredible. And they're just, it's plants, you know, it's antioxidants are isolated from plants, Mm -hmm. which is amazing. It's just like basic things that we already have. Like fisetin comes like mostly from strawberries. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's so important. I think too, people have to realize like you're getting older, you have more buildup of toxins, you're not able to detox as much. So you have this buildup and and it's harder to get rid of those zombie cells. It's harder to get, you know, things get dysregulated the older you get. So it's super important to add those pieces in. Yeah, and they're they're simple. They're easy ways to add them in, you know. know. As long as I would always say, just, you know, try to take the right dosage. Yeah. It's not like you could just eat like all these strawberries every day and it's gonna give you the right amount of fisetin to like kill all the zombie cells. So you can get it from diet, but I also say try to supplement like 
target the supplementation based on what's going on in your body. Yeah, super. And then also we'll get just because this is a hot topic, peptides. Yeah. <laughs> so, my favorite topic. <laughs> everyone wants to know all the information about peptides. So what are your, I guess, there's there's different ones, you know, immunity and mm -hmm. all this. So what are your go-tos for longevity? BPC-157. I think is one of like the easiest, safest peptides to mm. use. You can take it orally, you can inject it. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's more of like one of those universal peptides that will just kind of help everything. And like heal, it's, yeah. named, it's like the Wolverine peptide. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's regenerative, exactly. It's regenerative, it can also help with your gut health a lot. Mm. Um, I also like thymosin beta-4, thymosin alpha-1, the mm -hmm. immune peptides, Yeah. to really help regulate the immune system because I've, I've been seeing people's immune systems kind of Really, like, there's a lot of inflammation. The peptides will also help bring that down, too. Yeah, they're so great. It's like healing, immune, there's skin, there's yeah. just like everything. Everything. So there's a peptide are, for everything. Yeah, so that's a big one in the biohacking space. Um, so, where do you see um, health and longevity kind of in the future going? Especially even like with AI, there's it's so beneficial because we're able to grab so much more data mm -hmm. and help with the longevity and our knowledge. For sure. So, I think we're already seeing this trend towards personalized medicine, right? Mm -hmm. Like more root cause medicine, understanding what you're dealing with and why, rather than just you know suppressing. Mm -hmm. I think AI is helpful in the sense that it's help taking people in the right direction. You can do a lot of these labs now, the AI will kind of tell you based on your labs what it recommends. Mm -hmm. But I've actually, I said this in a recent interview too, I said nothing will compare though to your doctor listening to you, right? Compared to AI, like the AI does not, it doesn't know what you're dealing with. Yeah. Right? Lifestyle, so, habits, everything, exactly. mindset. Exactly, mindset, <laughs> emotionally, even your like your, I guess it could factor in medications, but you know, Sometimes I compare, you know, I see patients who will put their results before I can read them to, into chat GPT. Mm. And they'll tell me like, you know, they'll show me and I'm like, yeah, this is great. Like this makes sense. But often I do tweak it or change it up a bit based on what the patient's telling me and also what they're willing to do. Yeah. You have to meet people wh where they're at. Yeah, I know. And their stage, their lifestyle, their age, mm -hmm. all those factors come into play and like what they're willing to do based off of their mindset. Like mm -hmm. what is holding them back? What is, yeah. you know, from these habits or something that they can't really get to their ultimate like health and, and lifespan, you know? Exactly. So, and then what are, you know, I, I know this is a boring topic, mm -hmm. but the foundation of health I know, like, do you tell patients, hey, maybe get more sleep or, you know, eat only whole foods? Like, what is your strategy working with Absolutely. patients for that? Absolutely. I call those the non-negotiable. Non-negotiables yeah, of longevity. <laughs> yes. Because, and I said this, like, like, you can take the peptides, you can take the NAD, but if you're not, you know, focusing on the foundations of health, you're not getting really the best benefit from what you're taking. You yeah. Know? And sleep is one of the biggest things. Obviously, like when it comes to food, I, I have to play around depending on who the patient is. Mm. Some people I can, you know, tell them like, hey, follow this anti-inflammatory diet and right away they start shifting. Other people, I ask them to take one thing out. Like, let's just mm. start with gluten, right? If like, if they've been eating this diet their whole lives, I don't expect people to shift overnight, but I'll start with one or two things. And over time though, within like six months or a year, you see radically their like whole diet has changed. Uh -huh. That's so right? great. Yeah, little by little. Little by little. It's, yeah. And then getting rid of all that processed food is just life saving. Exactly. <laughs> and they stop craving it. They're yeah. Like, I don't even want it anymore. It's all just craving and the habits. And it's like once you get out of that cycle, you ask yourself, why was I doing that? You know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so, but like we, you know. <laughs> We don't know better until we know better. I know. Um, what are your ha what are your sleep hacks? Because a lot of people, I feel like, you know, I just did an interview as well, all, kind of all around sleep, and it seems, you know, it's the core for our hormones. Mm -hmm. It's the core for longevity. It's the core for our immune system. Mm -hmm. So, what do you suggest someone maybe struggling with sleep? Is there like a supplement? Is there something that you, you know? feel like helps best? Yeah, uh, again, depends on the person. Magnesium 3 and 8 I really like, mm. or a blend of magnesium, like magnesium breakthrough can yeah, help people. Yeah, that's great. 
Um, I like also like phosphatidylserine mm. to help bring down cortisol at night. A lot of the reason people can't sleep is like their cortisol pattern is off. Yeah. And they're making so much cortisol at night and they're wired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So phosphatidylserine, magnesium, those are two ways to really help bring down and suppress the cortisol at night. Oh my God. What else do I like? I'm There's so think. many. There's so I many. Know. It's hard. Yeah. I feel like sleep is what people try to get like you know, do the least of. <laughs> Which is, it's funny because you need the most of because you're like, you know, you're making your hormones at night, you're detoxing at night. I so know. <laughs> you're not getting sleep, you're just aging yourself so much faster. I know. So this is so, uh, there's so many things we can discuss with longevity yeah. and I think like the foundation of health and then all the biohacks. So since this is, you know, the Biohackers <laughs> World Conference, what are your like top three biohacks that you want to I think my top three, I would say NR, definitely. Okay. Me too. Um, because we, we cycle through NAD, like our mitochondria just keep using it. Mm. So for sure, NR, take some sort of liver support binder, something to help detox the body consistently. Speaking and then language. choose a peptide, you know, like BPC, <laughs> you know, BPC, thymosin, whatever it is. I think for me, those are my top three. I love that so much. <laughs> this is so great. So everyone, go check out Dr. Sogol at concierge md and she's so amazing thank and you, you have a whole program so i'm so grateful to be interviewing you here. Same here so thank you so much thank you jenny all right and if you have not yet been to biohackers world guess what we're coming to chicago in july and miami in november you absolutely want to be there these events are unlike anything else and i've never even seen a longevity and health optimization conference in Chicago. So I'm so excited to see all of you in Chicago at Biohackers World.